One, two, three. Noisy Pixel. What's up, nerds, and welcome to Noisy News Week for the week of November 2nd, 2019. Here's where I fill you in on some notable news posted to NoisyPixel.net this past week. So, uh, to kick things off, we have a lot of news to cover today, which is surprising since usually this time of year is kind of slow, but not, not this, not this time. Not this time. For all you ShipFu fans out there, Azure Lane Crosswave will be getting a physical release from Limited Run Games for PlayStation 4. There's a limited edition and there's a standard edition, and those will go on sale on November 5th at Limited Run Games. I don't know what this thing is going on with Idea Factory International and Limited Run Games, but pretty much Idea Factory International, as an independent publisher, they are running into some issues producing all of these physical releases and not getting a return on them, which is understandable. But I'm going to blame it on the failure that is Super Neptunia RPG because <laughs> I don't care what y'all say. Game's not good. Game's not good. Anyway, the game is also coming to PC. That was confirmed. If you don't want to buy it on PlayStation 4, well, by all means, the PC version will be there for you. Moving on, if you don't know about this next FPS, I suggest you check it out. It's called Boundary, and it's an FPS in space. It's really cool, has some really nice looking physics, and I don't see enough people talking about it. So check it out. You might like it. I'm not the biggest FPS fan, but I can't stop paying attention to it. Moving on, Last of Us 2 will be delayed on PlayStation 4 until May 29th, 2020. I'm okay with that because honestly, we got too many games. And my birthday's in May, so this is just a birthday present to me. Anyway, moving on. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot got a new gameplay trailer. The trailer goes into depth showing Vegeta's gameplay, who you can play as in the game. I didn't know that you could play as another character in the game. I thought it was all through Goku's perspective, so it was pretty interesting to see um, how the game kind of differs between characters, and I'm excited to see more. I believe that game's coming out in 2020, so there's nothing we really have to worry about right now. A game that's coming out a little sooner than that is uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Recall to Exit, I think the name is. There's a new gameplay trailer for that. That game comes out on PlayStation 4 and PC on November 15th. It just shows characters. Can never get enough of those guys. Um, if you watch Tokyo Ghoul, this game encapsulates all of the arcs. So you have a bunch of characters in one game and it's more of like a Musu style action brawler. So expect that. Death Stranding revealed that it's coming to PC next year. Man, all of the money that Sony gave Kojima wasn't enough for that foo to go over to 505 Games to publish his game on PC. Sony could have did it. Sony has a few PC arms, Unties being one of them. If you haven't heard of them, they do like the demo games and stuff like that. Unties even did that Advanced War style game and they put it on Nintendo. So Sony pulled this off, but yet Kojima went to 505 games? Really? I guess they did that one control game recently, but whatever. The game also got a launch trailer, but it is over seven minutes long, which is probably one of the longest launch trailers that I've ever seen. So PC fans, coming out next summer. Moving on to some mobile news, uh, Dengenki, Bo Dengenki Bunko, hmm? Dengenki Bunko Crossing Void revealed that it will have a global open beta test. I think the game's only available in China right now or maybe Korea, one of those places, but that's gonna happen on November 5th for iOS and Android. Uh, there's a website, check the link, follow the link below, you'll see where it is. And this is like action RPG featuring like Dorara and Excel World and Black Bullet. Those games, Strike the Blood, Sword Art Online, all those games in one game. So check it out. Some kind of sad news, Mary Skelter 2 will not be released in Australia because it failed the classification board there. That's like the ESRB or the PEGI rating, which sucks. It happens to a lot of Idea Factory games in the past. I don't know what to tell you. Next next month, if you're in Australia, next month the game is coming to limited run games and I believe that they do ship internationally, but sorry you have to deal with that. That sucks. Koei Tecmo wants to know if you want the Atelier series, the trilogies, remasters that they're putting on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 and PC, I believe, but forget about PC for right now. Nintendo Switch and PS4, if you want those physically released in the US, I, for one, 
do. I love that series. I would definitely buy a physical release of it. And if you want that as well, let them know. They're constantly sending stuff back to HQ. Monster Hunter World Iceborne is going to have a PC release on January 9th, 2020. So PC fans don't have to wait much longer. There's going to be a few enhancements as you'd expect the PC version to have. And that's really cool. Incredible Mandy is coming to Nintendo Switch on November 7th. I had no idea what this game was. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, holy crap. I need to know more about this game. It looks beautiful. I think it's already on Steam, but expect more from that. Lost Ember is going to be released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on November 22nd. This is a like a wolf game. You play as a wolf and there's like a spirit and then you can uh, you can like transform into other creatures and explore a post-apocalyptic world, run around and it tells a story. There's a narrative there. It just looks really pretty. That's it. Everreach Project Eden is going to be delayed until the end of the year for PC and Xbox One. This game looks really dope. I don't know if you've been paying attention to it or not, but it looks cool. Very double A, I suppose, but I'm I'm okay with the delay because again, too many games. There's going to be a PS4 release in 2020 as well. Mobile News, Tales of Crystoria is delayed indefinitely for quality improvements. I guess they were not satisfied, so it will not come out in 2019. This is a Tales game where it's on mobile devices and there's a bunch of Tales characters in it. And I think it's kind of like Tales of Link, but it's not Tales of Link. I'm not sure. It looks good. Give them the time they need to port a great game over to the West. That's all I can say about that. Dead or Alive 6 is celebrating the Halloween season with some witch costumes for the girls. No male costumes, but who needs those anyway? <laughs> Go ahead and check those out. It's part of the season pass. I think that's $80 for the season three pass and you get a new character and a bunch of costumes, but you can buy the individual costumes now. So again, go look up Hanukkah's buy Hanukkah. Actually, I'm really liking Nico recently. You don't listen to me anymore. I'm all over the place. Moving on, Yuppie Psycho has confirmed a PS4, Xbox One, and Switch release for 2020 with new story DLC across all platforms. This is a game where you play as a, a guy who just started a new job. He was like a total neat before and, and got accepted into this really prestigious office that kind of controls everything and then he realizes that it's not all that it's cracked out to be. It's really funny because I started an office job at one point and I looked around and it was a lot like Yuppie Psycho. So if you if you do have an office job, you could probably relate to this game a lot more. Fairy Tale, the Gus developed JRPG got a new trailer showing more characters, environments, and battle systems. Really cool looking game. Gus killing it, knocking it out of the park. I'm so glad that they didn't give this to Omega Force because then we would just got a Musu fairy tale game and no offense, those games are good, but I kind of like the idea of JRPG fairy tale. For like an indie visual novel news, Chemically Bonded is coming to PC on November 26th and this is a kickstarted visual novel. Check it out. There's a new trailer for it. So yeah, watch it. See if you like it. Black Future 88 has a Switch and PC release date scheduled for November 21st. This is a really dope looking kind of 2D action game where, you know what, if you've ever seen the anime Gantz, it reminds me of a lot of that where an AI kind of tells you to go kill something and then you do it, you know, and you, you fight against some other people. Man, I really like Gantz. Anyway, that's coming out. Neo 2, kind of the Dark Souls of action Koei Tecmo games, I guess. Neo 2 received a release date for PlayStation 4 on March 13th, 2020. So it's a while away, but anyone who wants to play it now can wait a couple days because when this posts, you should be downloading this game. There's an open beta from November 1st through November 10th and go enjoy it, go play it, have fun, give feedback. This is a great time to tell the developers what you'd like to see in a game. The Grisaid Trilogy is getting a Western release on Switch on November 7th. It's an eShop exclusive and this is all three titles with the side stories. It's the all ages version. Really cool series. If you want, watch the anime, but I suggest this is a visual novel that everyone should play. It's a very long visual novel too. There's some cute ass girls in it. Anyway, <laughs> oh man. Um, anyway, let's move on to exclusives. We're running a Spirit Hunter NG novella series. We have exclusive posting rights in the West for the Urashima Woman 
novella. This was previously published on Famitsu by Experience when the game released in Japan, but we are releasing it in the West. So please check that out. And thank you, Axis, for kind of navigating that with the developer with us. It's really cool to share these extra side stories with Western fans. And I'm glad we could do that. Let's move on to reviews. We have a few reviews, not too many this week. Atelier Riza, Nico Nin, XR3, Hashime of the Old Book Town, Close to the Sun, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD, Disgaea 4 Complete Plus, and Amiya Kaze Spoiling My Silver Haired Girlfriend. That's it. Thank you for tuning in for another week of news. This is a longer episode, I know. If you like it, tell me you like it. If you don't, tell me why. Because <laughs> I just want to get better. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. And until next week, I was going to say something clever, but then I never came up with anything. So yeah, until next week. See you later.